Itera is dying, traveler. What's going on, everybody? Terra here. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to take a look at Last Epoch in a CPU focused video where we're going to check the capabilities of the Ryzen 3700X, 5900X, and 7800X 3D. I also wanted to check for NVIDIA driver overhead, so we'll also be comparing the 7900XDX and 4090 as well, although we'll for the most part be CPU bound. Anyway, enough with the intro, let's get straight to it. We're going to begin with the settings like we always do, and the focus will be on 1440p maxed out graphical settings, and we're going to check out three parts of the game, three recordings per run. The first part will be Keeper's Camp, which is the first starting city, if you will, little camp area. There's not much going on. Second part will be the Fortress Vault, where we're going to record averages and 1% lows all the way to the Keeper Vault door. Then we're going to fight a boss and take that recording as well. And we're going to be compared across all three CPUs and see how much faster one is over the other. And unlike my Helldivers 2 video, you can actually see the big differences between the 3700X and 5900X. So something's going on with that game if you didn't watch that video. It was very weird. Anyway, let's get back to Last Epoch. As for the NVIDIA driver overhead, well, there isn't one here. Not with these CPUs anyway. As a matter of fact, the 7900XDX is either matching the 4090 or sometimes a little bit behind, which is kind of unusual because you figure with CPU bound it would be the same, but a lot of stuff also comes to drivers and optimizations and stuff like that. But we're going to be using the 4090 numbers as far as CPU comparisons. And for the first part on the 3700X, which was Keeper's Vault, we clocked in 136 FPS on the averages and 109 FPS on the 1% lows. As far as 4090 and 7900 XTX, on averages they were about the same, 136 FPS for the 4090 and 130 FPS for the 7900 XTX. As far as 1% lows, the Nvidia GPU was a little bit ahead, not by much, 109 versus 99 FPS. Now, on the second part here, we're going to take the readings at the end of this area, and for part 2, on the Ryzen 3700X, we have 130 FPS for the averages and 102 FPS for 1% lows. So, kind of comparable to Keeper's Vault, although we were doing a lot of fighting in this area. I have edited this down a bit, but it was about 5 to 10 minutes worth of gameplay of killing a bunch of enemies. Now, the next area will be a little boss battle. 7900 XTX and 4090 numbers were pretty close, although the 4090 was a little ahead, as you can see. Not by much. This battle here gets a little bit intense. We have to keep this NPC here alive, and we have to survive waves of enemies and a boss battle in the end. And for here, for the 3700X, we had 117 FPS on the averages and 83 FPS on the 1% lows. As for the 7900XDX and 4090, they were practically the same. 117 averages for 4090 to 116 for 7900XDX, and 83 FPS 1% lows for the 4090 to 82 FPS 1% lows It isn't safe. We'll reconvene outside. Let's now get on the 5900X. Here I've just gone ahead and dropped in the 5900X on the same Strix B550F Gaming Wi-Fi motherboard. 32 gigs of 3600 MHz CL16 RAM. And we're again using the RTX 4090 and 7900 XTX. We're going to begin again in the Keeper's Camp here, and now we're seeing the type of numbers that you would expect going from a Ryzen 3000 to 5000. And what we have here is the 5900X is 35% faster on the averages over the 3700X, and 36% faster on the 1% lows over the 3700X. 
So this is kind of what we expected to also see in the Helldivers video I released, but we didn't see that actually. We've seen both CPUs perform the same. That is crazy. What about part two though? Well, on part two, we're seeing similar gains. We have the 5900X is 33% faster on the averages than the 3700X and 30% faster on the 1% lows than the 3700X. So while these gains are somewhat expected between these two generations of CPU, what was kind of unusual was uh, how far ahead the 4090 was here actually. And it could be that we are hitting close to GPU limitations sometimes on the 7900XTX. For example, in part two, the 4090 had 173 FPS averages and 7900XTX had 159. And for 1% lows, the 4090 was at 131 at the end of the run, and 7900XX at 106, so quite a bit of a gap there. It was a similar gap in Keeper's Camp, too. So that's kind of interesting, but it could be variations in gameplay, or all it takes is a stutter or two to knock your frame rate down, especially on the 1% lows. So that's kind of interesting. Entering part three in our boss fight here well the gap has shrunk a little bit between the 5900x and 3700x now this is a smaller recording a shorter recording if you will but we have the 5900x is ahead by 28 percent on the averages and 15 percent ahead on the one percent lows over the 3700x and the 7900x dx has pretty much fallen in line with the 4090 they're only one or two FPS apart between averages and 1% lows. That's kind of what we expected to see, but we didn't on the previous two parts of this run. Interesting. Let's go ahead and check out the last CPU though, the 7800X3D, my fastest CPU I own. Okay, let's get through the last processor I got. And as far as the two GPUs, I'll probably do a GPU bound focused video where we test both of these. But for now, on part one, we have a rather smaller gap between the 7800X3D and 5900X. We have 28% faster on the averages for the 7800X3D over the 5900X and only 16% faster on the 1% lows. Interesting. Let's check out part two. And on part two, we have similar advantages to what we had before. 125% on the averages over the 5900X for the 7800X 3D, and 15% faster on the 1% lows over the 5900X. I gotta say, the 5900X is doing extremely well here. And to be fair, the 3700X is actually doing pretty good as well. Well, above 60 anyway for the 3700X, and pretty much up there for high refresh rate gaming. That is actually quite impressive. It just goes to show how well optimized this game is. And this game actually scratches my Diablo 4 itch because Diablo 4 for me was uh, rather disappointing. I did play this game a ton before it went live. So I lost that character, but I've been trying to get back into it. It's just, there's so much going on at the moment, but I do really like Last Epoch. It's a really, really good game really good diablo like old school diablo like it's an awesome game you guys should check it out as far as the 7900 xx and 4090 they're actually rather close here we have the 4090 at 216 for averages 7900 xx at 199 so very close one percent lows are practically the same 4090 is at 155 over 7900 xx is 153 so just a two fps uh, advantage on the one percent lows very impressive Let's check out part three, the last part of this video, and then I'll give my conclusion after that. Let's check it out. In the last part of this video, we see the 7800X3D gaining a little bit more ground than what we've seen previously. We basically have the 7800X3D being 35% faster on the averages over the 5900X and 32% faster on the 1% lows over the 5900X. A little bit better this time. As far as our two GPUs, well, 
they're pretty close. The 4090 is a couple FPS ahead on the averages, and on the 1% lows, actually, the 7900 XTX is a couple FPS ahead. This is a smaller, shorter recording because this boss fight is not all that long, so it is what it is, but it's kind of a perspective about these CPUs and how they compare to one another in what I wanted to be different scenarios. One being a quiet city, a boss clearing event, and just regular trash mob clearing map that you normally run into this type of game. As for my conclusion, I want to thank you all sincerely for watching my video, but most importantly, I would really value your feedback regarding this video. I feel I may have made it a bit more complicated than perhaps it needed to be, splitting it up into different parts, one a quiet city, one clearing a bunch of ads, and the other a boss fight. Should I have only limited to one GPU, just the 4090, and then make another GPU focused video where the CPU is not the limiting factor? I will be doing that by the way. Lastly, as far as the main intention of this video, seeing how CPU intensive Last Epoch is, it's not really too bad actually. It's actually quite good. And we're seeing that gap between the different generations of Ryzen that you'd expect, especially from the 3700X versus 5900X. Since the results in my Helldivers 2 four generations of Ryzen CPU was kind of mind blowing, but that may be another topic for another video. Anyway, I want to thank you again for watching my video Please like and comment below, I really value all you guys' input into better shaping my content so that it's more informative. Until next time, bye bye.